Is someone telling you you're addicted to video games? Like, seriously, are your parents giving you a hard time because the amount that you like to play or how often you like to play or what you like to play? Is someone giving you grief? Maybe a friend, a family member? How much do you play? Really? What is addictive behavior when it comes to video gaming? I mean, seriously, who cares about a video game addiction anyway? Really? What's it going to cause a problem? For? Well, with a little bit of research, a little bit of knowledge and, well, a lot of knowledge is power. I could actually tell you very, very quickly answers to all of these questions over this video and why knowing about this problem that you might not be aware of, this could actually save you a lot of grief, a lot of hassle, maybe counseling or or medical help in the future, because we have no idea how bad this one's going to get, to be honest, but we're worried. Um, this video is going to help you with all of that. Um, specifically, today's video, this one is all about spotting the signs and knowing what to look for, even if it's not for yourself, for your friend, someone you care about, someone you love. If they don't know the signs to watch out for, you know, it's like not knowing where the booby trap is. You're going to fall in every time, right? But friends help friends out. And well, that's what this video is about. So even if it's not for you, learn what to look for. So at least that way you can be the one that goes and saves the day, you know, superhero style, right? And maybe it does come in useful for yourself. And well, that's what we call a win-win situation. So if you clicked on this video, you're probably asking yourself, what are the symptoms of a video game addiction? Well, I went through the top three in that first video. I hope you got uh, to check that out and kind of made you have a little think. But remember, these are the things that you may want to know about, like a life skill, for example, a tool to have in your toolbox that might be really useful, not even if you're worried about yourself, but more, you know, your friends. Because, well, we all have friends that play way more than we do right i mean you know that friend i'm talking about that that friend that just plays way too much like you know video games are on their brains just a bit too much maybe they like watching play video game players play a lot well those were the three top symptoms that we talked about in that first video but today we're going to complete that list and these are symptoms that well if you know how to spot them you could see a problem coming before it ever becomes a problem and here's the thing we don't even know how big of a problem it's going to get it's not been around like forever i mean the world health organization has only really classified gaming addiction or gaming disorder in is is a new thing pretty recently they've they've decided to to label it as a pattern or persistent or reoccurring gaming behavior which may be online or offline and uh, and manifested by impaired control over gaming really meaning you can't control yourself you, you have to play you really want to you can't stop yourself and well increasing priority is given to gaming to the extent that gaming starts to take precedence over other life interests and the daily activities and the continuation or escalation of gaming despite the occurrence of negative consequences so take out the sciencey bit and all the big words really it's just saying if gaming's got to the point where you can't stop yourself because yeah you have to play it just driving you you miss it you and 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 it's starting to cause negative consequences in your life is things are starting to go wrong maybe your grades are slipping or, you know it's affected a friendship or maybe it's uh, affected your sleep or um it's affected something right then but then that's that's what the, that's what we're talking about so you know oh, now remember there are over three billion people playing video games in the world today and in the video game industry what 200 billion dollars or more now but here's the thing of those billions of gamers, the World Health Organization has have estimated that between three and nine percent of the people who play video games get addicted to it. But still, isn't it better to know how it works to protect yourself from it so that you don't get into that trouble? So look, you wouldn't get into a car and not wear a seatbelt, right? I mean, yeah, that would be crazy, right? It, it, this is the same thing. It's about giving yourself a life skill that gives you the ability to make smarter and more awesome decisions. I'm not going to tell you what to do. The first one, you can't stop thinking about video games that are on your brain too much. It just is the first thing you think of when you have free time. It's the first thing you think of before your other hobbies. It's just something you want to talk a lot about with your friends. It's on your brain too much. That's number one. Remember? Number two, do you love watching people play video games, right? Your, your friends play, your siblings, your grown-ups play. Do you love watching you know, people play on YouTube? Does YouTube become a bit of a thing? Huh. How did I know? That is number two symptom. Remember on the list? 
And well, the third one that we covered just very quickly in this recap, um, do you get grumpy, moody, frustrated, a bit uh, when you have to stop playing or you're not allowed to play? That's called a withdrawal symptom, right? And that's just your body's way of saying, I don't want to stop doing this. This is fun. This is exciting. And wow, it makes me happy. Stop it. I don't want to. And, and, and you get grumpy. Yeah. Like, mom, go away. Just give me 10 more minutes. Right. That thing. Right. OK. So that was number three. OK, so let's move on. Number four. Now, you've got to be honest with yourself on this one, because at the end of the day, if you're honest with yourself or if your friends are honest with you in that case. But have you ever lied to yourself or someone else about how often you play, what you play, when you play? I'm not going to be a hypocrite, guys. Right. I, I'm not. I, I was 12. I'm not that. Well, OK, I'm 40 now. It was a while ago. But when I was 12, I, I got busted. I was I was, I was, you know, put to put to bed at eight o'clock. I put the sheets over my head. I got my Game Boy out, started playing Mario Brothers. And it's like until midnight, way past my bedtime, being all sneaky. And my mom came in and I lied. And, Oh, did I get in trouble? Whew. To this day, I still regret it. My mom didn't trust me for like six months. And well, as you can imagine, I had to learn a really, really tough lesson that lies don't get you anywhere. Doesn't matter if it's a little white lie, a big, massive lie, and any lie in between. If it's not the truth, it is not going to end well. But I don't need to teach you this. You're old enough, right? You know what a lie is. So, well, that's the thing, though. It makes us sneaky. It makes us start to lie and do the little white light thing because we don't really want everyone to know how much time we really are spending on it or maybe what kind of games we are playing or maybe when or where we are playing more than most people realize so it becomes a bit sneaky and all of a sudden that goes just downhill quick right so that's why that is number four on the list it's the porcupine thing hmm. okay so number five have you started to isolate yourself? Have you started to like distance yourself? You know, you know, 2020 is not here anymore. We don't have to, we don't have to be in a bubble anymore. Remember that. Okay. And well, 2020 was really tough. In fact, most of my students and most of the people watching probably remember not that long ago, we were all in lockdown for a long time. In fact, here in the United Kingdom, we were in lockdown for about 15 months. And can you imagine the amount of people that just went inside and had nothing better to do than to, well, play video games? And one of the ways of socializing was through video games. So it kind of caused this whole tidal wave of new gamers and new socializing skills inside tech, which was really good for the time, but, but maybe not so great for the bigger picture. You know, those friendships that we want at the end of our days, the ones that last our lifetime, those friends that travel the world and do amazing things with us not just the friends that want to be in a video game all the time, right? Well, a lot of people didn't get out of that groove after 2020. They just kind of kept going into those and kept the same habits they had. Because remember, you only have to do anything 21 times and it becomes a habit or can become a habit, quite simply. It's just the way humans work. We, we are programmed to do something repetitive and all of a sudden that repetition becomes a habit. And of course, if you take my classes and my lessons, then I'm going to teach you all the best life skills, habits, tips, and tricks that life has to offer to make your life more amazing. But unfortunately, there are lots of, well, habits that aren't so good and very quickly become negative if you're not careful, right? And it's all about finding that balance, of course. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, if you'd rather stay in and play a video game and, well, with your mates online rather than go out and do other things that you once enjoyed or maybe hanging out with your friends in a park or doing something more adventurous in real life, for example, then, well, if that's not your thing anymore or, you know, really isn't your thing now, then that's number five, the... And well, that's a number five warning sign, starting to isolate yourself, becoming less social. Mm, that's it. All right, number six. Have you started to lose interest in hobbies that you used to have or love? Um, maybe entertainment that you used to enjoy, different movies and different genres of, of, of uh, like reading and you know, Rubik's Cubes and uh, you know, jigsaw puzzles and other you know, crazy, just fun things that you used to love to do. Maybe uh, you used to be more sporty. Maybe you used to, I don't know, whatever that hobby is, has it been impacted from gaming? 
Because at the end of the day, video games will become number one priority for those of you that have started to experience these symptoms of a video game addiction. Video games very, very quickly starts to take over when you've got your free time and you've got some spare spare time to hang out and chill or at the end of the day when you finished your homework and you've done all your stuff and video games is the very first thing that comes to your mind that's probably a warning sign it's impacting your other hobbies your other interests in a negative way i can guarantee video games even though i love them and they're fun they are not the first in fact they're not even the top five things i think of when i think of fun <laughs> when i think of fun i think of scuba diving i think of surfing i think of uh, mountain biking, I think of, well, you understand, right? I'm an adrenaline junkie. I love to be outdoors doing crazy fun things. That's where you'll find me traveling the world when I'm not doing something I love like this. But at the end of the day, well, that loss of hobbies and interests and all of a sudden escalation of video games, that's the number six on the list. Okay. Number seven, continued excessive use of video games despite the knowledge of it becoming a problem, either psychologically with your head or physically, like, like, you know, just having a hard time not doing it. And even though you know it's causing problems and you understand that it's a problem, you still continue to play despite the negative results. Because you all know, right, doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is crazy. It, it doesn't happen. Unfortunately, when you're into gaming, you know it's negative, you know it's causing a problem, but you can't help yourself. It kind of keeps drawing you back. It keeps making you want to play. And it's really hard not to. Hmm. All right. If you experience that, that is a really good signal that well, number seven on the list is, 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 is a warning sign you want to pay attention to. All right. Number eight. Do you use video games to relieve stress to get away from the world to maybe um escape a little bit right but are you escaping to video games because the feelings that you have in the real world aren't things that you really want to pay attention to is it because you're maybe in a negative state of mind or in a negative mood or some kind of guilt or anxiety is there something that you're feeling that helplessness or unhappiness in some way shape or form and because of the problems in real life video games well they're full of excitement and fun and happiness and rewards all the things life lacks lots of are much harder to get so well yeah Let's, let's go to the video game instead, right? It's going to be more, far more fun and a lot, lot more enjoyable than, than the dull real world. So, yeah, if you're starting to use video games to escape, but very specifically escape from a lot of negative stuff in the real world, and you find that the place to go because you're in control there and you feel like you have a safe place to socialize and, and be heard, and, well, that's number eight. So number nine... Has video games caused or jeopardized some friendship or relationship or some family member trying to help um, and, and is causing issues with them? Has it caused a problem with maybe some of your friends? So number nine really is all about it, the video games, starting to cause problems with your relationships, with any kind of relationship, being it your, your grown-ups, your parents, your siblings, your brothers and sisters, your aunts and uncles, you know, your friends, um, your family, it doesn't matter who, your teachers, the people in your school, whoever, if, if video games have started to cause problems with any of those relationships, that's a red flag. That's why it's number nine. Number 10, have you noticed that you need to start to play more and more and more, like time-wise, right? Like, like all of a sudden in the weekends, you go from just an hour of or so on the weekend to all of a sudden it's like 10 hours. Like all, all your spare time, all your free time starts to go into the game. All of a sudden you're staying up later. You know, it's harder to get to bed because you've got to finish the end of the level or the, the tournament or whatever it is. Yeah. Have you noticed an increase in the amount of time that you're playing? Have a think. Over the last six months or a year, have you noticed an increase? How much? Hmm, that would be a symptom of a video game addiction. So number 11, 
Well, number 11 is actually going to be broken down into about eight different little bits, but because, well, number 11 is all about physical symptoms. The first 10 I've given you are very much symptoms all related to video games in, 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 in a different sense, but the number 11 is very much a physical thing. So, for example, the first physical symptom or problem that you might experience as a gamer that plays a lot or too much is migraines, headaches. And if you experience headaches during or after the gaming, you might want to pay attention to this because, well, very simply, I'll teach you in well one of the next videos that I do, but it's, you know, this recipe, we call it the addiction formula, but this, this four has four ingredients and these four ingredients do different things to make our body react. And one of those things is a really speedy, active camera. So that all of a sudden our brain, well, and our eyes are going way faster than normal. It causes an excitement, so kind of an adrenaline zing. We'll talk about that more later. But at the end of the day, this zing is, well, because the game is moving so much faster than normal than the real world is. And that makes your eyesight try and keep up. And it has a hard time doing that because it's used to slow focusing in the real world, not lots of focusing really fast in a video game, and it wears your eyes out. They get tired. They're just not used to traveling that fast. And this causes, well, issues with the, all the connections and everything into your brain, and, 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 and it kind of doesn't like it, and it will cause headaches and migraines. Now, if you start to experience headaches and migraines, please go get your eyes checked from uh, uh, an eye doctor. So they can make sure your eyes are 20, 20 the way they should be. And if there is an issue, they can catch it and help you with that as quickly and professionally as possible. So, OK, migraines, headaches, check. Number two, huh, computer vision syndrome. So this is called CVS. And this is actually, well, pretty much the eyes thing. It's um, it's needing glasses to, to deal with uh, too much right in front of a screen all the time. You know, they say, uh, if you sit too close, it'll give you square eyes. Well, not quite. I know it's a bit of a yeah, far stretch, that one, but it, it is not good for you. Not like hours a day, right? Oh, here's, here's a harsh and but very real one. Pro gamers experience this. And have you ever heard of carpal tunnel syndrome? This is where when you've been playing too much or on your mouse, um, you click, 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 and, you, you're, you're, and you're straining these muscles. And all of a sudden, they give up. And what happens is, is you go like that, and you can't open it. It's not nice. It's I've had friends that have had this. They had to go get surgery where they kind of can open the hand up. It's, you know, cut it all out, you know, fix the problem, sew it all back again. Lots of bandages, weeks without being able to use their hands. Not a lot of fun, especially for the person that had to help them go to the bathroom, i.e. toilet, right? You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't a good time for them. But you understand, here's the thing. Well, that's carpal tunnel syndrome, and gamers get it too. It's, it's one of the leading physical symptoms. Number four on the physical symptoms list is low energy, low drive. You're just, is gone. And here's the reason for that. Well, video games use a lot of your energy in these chemicals we call dopamine and adrenaline. I'll explain all about those very specifically in the next video. But at the end of the day, these chemicals make us happy and excited. And, well, they give us energy and, and they give us the ability to, well, move much faster than normal. But when we're not getting all that adrenaline and dopamine, when we're not playing the video games, all of a sudden we've used up all that energy already and kind of like our body's running on empty. It's like just low fumed energy and it's hard. And well, it can make going to sleep really hard too because you understand at the end of the day, adrenaline and dopamine, those chemicals that we turn up in the video game to make you happy and excited, well, those chemicals also control your sleeping patterns and lots of other things. So it will mess with your sleep and well, you guys all know, right, that sleep's really important. In fact, so important that the scientists have figured out if you guys don't get between 8 and 12 hours sleep regularly, it can cause mental problems as, as, a, as an adult. It could really mess with your head, like, properly. So you understand the sleep is so important, but, well, when you're playing video games, it can really intrude into your sleep and cause your sleep to become much less effective because you don't get a deep sleep because you've still got too much adrenaline happy excitement chemicals in your body to allow you to go into what's called a REM deep sleep now, at the end of the day long story short it's not good for you right and at the end of the day we have no idea how bad it's going to get say 40 years from now so hmm, 
Can you think of an addiction that ends well? I can't. And that's what's a bit scary too, because if you think about it, this is all kind of a big guinea pig experiment. I mean, you know, they've 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 made these games the last 10 years the way they have, highly addictive. And I'm gonna explain exactly how they do that in the next video. But this video was all about the symptoms, so you could see the problem and spot it, so you could do something about it if you wanted to. That's of course your decision. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. That's not my place at all. But hopefully by giving you the facts, the knowledge, and the knowledge is power, and that superpower of knowledge that you now have, you can now make better decisions. And that's what life skills are all about and why I love teaching them so much. That was number 11 on the physical symptoms, right? Symptoms of a video game addiction. We had physical symptoms at number 11. So number 12, has video games or gaming affected your grades or your academic results or some job or opportunity that you have or had? Has it done something negative to hold you back? And uh, did it cause you to get a lower grade than you should have on that last test? Did you really study as much as you could have? Uh, were you concentrating as much as you could have? Was your brain thinking about that new update that came out that day? Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's number 12 on the list. I've got two more videos I'm about to publish this week. And one of them is titled the video game time experiment test. Now, this will be a self-test that you can take. And during that video, you just kind of add a few numbers together, pretty much is all it does, and decide if you're happy with that number. If you are, you pass the test. If you're not, you fail. Simple. I don't need, I'm not even the one that needs to tell you if you pass or fail. You'll know. Trust me, you'll know. But if you want to see that video and you want that, that self-awareness time experiment test, please don't forget to like and subscribe right now because, well, guys, Without you doing that, I won't be able to get to the bigger audience to help other people that may find this information really useful. So please don't forget to share this stuff with your friends. Don't forget to add it and share it on social media because really by sharing that knowledge or sharing that power and as a group, you can make bigger, better decisions together. How much more awesome is that? Especially when your friends are all together when it comes to really difficult decisions like, well, life sometimes throws at you, right? Those are the symptoms of a video game addiction in total. I mean, there's probably little other ones that you know might be classified as warning signs, but really I think you should see from that list now that, let's put it this way, we went over 13 main symptoms. The physical symptoms alone had an extra eight. So let's say there's roughly around 20 symptoms to watch out for. If you were experiencing or showing five or more of these symptoms and have been, for a while now, that may be a cause for concern that you might want to do something about. Now, I'm not a professional counselor. I'm not here to tell you what to do or anything like that, but I am going to be creating a series of videos here that you can watch and enjoy that might help you make some better decisions and make your life a little bit easier when it comes to these topics. Because, well, I'm a life skills coach. That's what I do. And I love teaching this stuff. I have a 12 year old daughter who is, tried and tested with all my material. And well, I love teaching this stuff live online as well. So if you do want to uh, take a class with me and um, about video games or business or money, uh, I, I teach uh, oh, 160 different classes now online and all the links for my stuff will be in the description below. Here's the thing, if you don't remember to hit that subscribe button, you won't get the next amazing video I've got coming up this week. You might miss out on an awesome life skill opportunity that you might really need sometime soon. So please don't do that. Please remember to do that, hit that button for me. So if you did get more than five, don't worry. I've got you covered. I've got a whole bunch of information and awesome tips and tricks and hacks on how to solve this niggly little problem before it becomes a big one. Maybe you didn't have uh, more than five. Well, congratulations. That's a good sign that you're not in that worry zone yet. And well, now you know what to look out for and to watch out for your friends, right? Because they don't know this stuff. No one does. <laughs> in fact, the gaming industry wants to keep this stuff pretty quiet. Do you think they, they'd sell $200 billion worth of video games a year and to 3 billion video gamers around the world if everyone knew? Warning. Video game addiction symptoms include <laughs> one, 
You can't stop thinking about it. Two, you love watching it. Three, you get grumpy and moody. Four, right? Do you think they're ever going to do that? No way. Not till they legally have to. You know, like they did to cigarette companies once upon a time. But you understand, that's not a way, that's not going to happen for a while yet. So, hey, the more you share this knowledge and the more you learn, the more powerful you become, the more control of your amazing life you have. And that's all a good thing, right? I hope you enjoyed today's video. I'm Joe Reynolds, teaching you from the UK with explosivelearning.org. And I can't wait to show you the next video where I'm going to explain all about how they make a video game addictive. Literally, the science, the formula, the, the how they make their money. Really, you need to watch this video. This information blows the minds of everyone I seem to explain it to. It's pretty powerful stuff and could really change your life if you know how to use that information well. Until then. Have a great day. Bye.